Since the output of the OTA is a current, in general we need to convert that into a proportional voltage. This actually turns out to be one of the easier tasks that we have to accomplish when designing OTA circuits. A couple of things to keep in mind. First, since the output is a current source, it will take on whatever voltage is necessary in order to maintain the specified current. Now, that's within the limits of your power supply, of course. If you're running plus and minus 15 volt supplies, you probably cannot go beyond about plus and minus 14 volts. Second, the maximum magnitude of the output current is limited by the amplifier bias current. Whatever that is, the output current cannot exceed that magnitude. It might be positive or negative, but it cannot exceed IABC. Since the absolute maximum of the amplifier bias current is 2 milliamps, that puts an absolute maximum upper limit on our output current. More typically, however, you want to keep IABC below 1 milliamp, and so that, of course, would then be your upper limit on the magnitude of the output current, whether it was positive or negative. The first three schemes that we look at for doing this current to voltage conversion are all basically the same. You take that current from the output, you run it through a resistor, and then you buffer the voltage on the resistor. Now the difference here is the way that we buffer that voltage on the resistor. Now note your buffer must be a very high impedance device because you do not want it stealing any of the current because you want all of that to go through the resistor so that the voltage across the resistor truly is proportional to the current coming out of the OTA. The first buffer we will consider is the built-in Darlington pair on the LM13700. Now other OTAs may not have this built-in buffer capability, but the 13700 does. You configure the Darlington pair as an emitter follower. So you connect the emitter to the negative supply voltage through a resistor, and you connect your resistor, which is doing the current voltage conversion, to the base. The reason this is a Darlington pair rather than just a single transistor is that the current gain of the cascaded transistors is far higher than a single transistor by itself, so the input current is really quite small. Thus, it steals very little current from the resistor, but it does steal a little bit. The main advantage of using the Darlington pair is that it's built into the chip. You don't have to add an extra component other than the resistor that does the actual current to voltage conversion. And you have to add the resistor that connects to the emitter. The disadvantages are that it does add about a negative one volt offset to your output voltage. This may or may not be a problem depending on the situation. Another disadvantage is that with extremely low output currents, which can occur, the Darlington pair may steal a significant percentage of that output current, which is then going to distort your results. Also, if running plus and minus 15 volt supplies, the manufacturer only guarantees that the maximum output voltage can go to about 10 volts. So that's another potential problem. The next type of buffer we will consider is an FET buffer. Now this might be a JFET, it might be a MOSFET. The MOSFET of course would have the advantage of a much lower input current than the JFET, although the JFET would not have a very high input current either. But in either case you connect the FET as a source follower, very much like the emitter follower where the source is connected to your negative supply through a resistor. The big advantage, particularly if you use a MOSFET, is that the current stolen from the resistor doing the current to voltage conversion really is very small. 
The disadvantages of using an FET as the buffer are, first of all, it has one of the same disadvantages that the built-in Darlington pair has, which is that it does add a small negative offset to your output voltage, typically around minus one volt. The other disadvantage is that obviously you have to add a couple more components. You have to add the FET and you have to add the resistor that connects to the source. The final scheme that we will look at that involves using a resistor to ground to do the current to voltage conversion and then following that with a buffer uses an op amp connected as a voltage follower. Now here you would probably want to use some sort of FET input op amp in order to minimize the amount of current into that input. The advantages are, first of all, if you're using an FET op amp, it won't steal much current from your conversion resistor. And notably, it does not have the same disadvantage that the Darlington pair and the FET had, which is that it does not add an offset to your output voltage. Depending on the situation, that may be a noticeable advantage. The disadvantage is that, of course, it requires an op amp to be added to your circuit. Note that in all three cases where we're using some sort of device to buffer the voltage on the conversion resistor, that the value of that conversion resistor is chosen in order to give us the desired voltage range out. So typically what you would do is determine what your maximum output current is and select that resistor to give you the desired maximum output voltage in that case. We will look at some examples of how to select that resistor later. The other option uses instead an op amp connected as a current to voltage converter. The advantages here are that, assuming you're using an FET input op amp, the current stolen by the op amp itself is very small, so essentially all of that output current goes through the feedback resistor. And secondly, just as with the op amp voltage follower, this scheme does not add an offset to your output voltage. The main disadvantage of this scheme is that, just like with the voltage follower, you've got to add an op amp to your circuit. Note that this does invert the sense of the voltage relative to the output current, which may or may not be a problem. If it is a problem, then all you have to do is configure your OTA as an inverting amplifier, not a non-inverting amplifier, so that's an easy fix. But in some cases, at some point along the way with your signal, you may have inverted the signal already, and so the inverting amplifier would flip it back over. So that could be an advantage. It just depends on the situation. In other applications, for example, if you're building a voltage-controlled filter where the output current is actually being used to charge a capacitor, then you can use the same buffering schemes to buffer the voltage on that capacitor that you did for buffering the voltage on the current to voltage conversion resistor. Same thing whether you use the built-in Darlington pair or whether you use an op amp or, or whatever it happens to be. One note here, and we'll see this in a later video, if you're designing a voltage controlled filter, it's probably perfectly acceptable to use the built-in Darlington pair for this because in your filter you'll have some feedback. The feedback will automatically compensate for the offset introduced by the Darlington buffer. After that basic introduction to converting the output current of the OTA into a voltage, we need to move on. In our next video, we will look at some basic applications of the OTA. This will by no means be a complete list of all the possible applications of the operational transconductance amplifier. There are far more than the three or four that we will cover. Thank you.